Markets hovering just above the flat line after record highs this week. To discuss strategists' outlook on the rest of the year, Yahoo Finance's very own Miles Udland is here. You've been tracking the strategist takes pretty much across the board here. Who, who is... I'm filling in for Josh Schaefer. <laughs> <laughs> who is his job for the day. Who has the most resounding perspective right now on what could prevail in the second half? Well, I, I think if you, you know, look at the lay of the land, it obviously has to be the folks um, with the 6,000 price target. But, you know, the the most recent move was from Lori Calvacina and her team over at RBC in a note yesterday to clients raising their price target to 5,700 from 5,300. So we're only 200 points away. All these price targets, um, and of course, Julian Emanuel at, at Evercore with that um, most bullish outlook, all these price targets, which really came higher in the last couple of weeks, uh, seemed you know, exciting at the time, but now, of course, with the S&P at, what, 55.09 yesterday, 55 and some change this morning, we're basically right back at these levels. And I think, you know, Lori's note yesterday captured the sentiment from a lot of folks. You ask who's the most resounding. There's a, a sense of resignation, and maybe that's yeah. too negative, but there's like this, look, we were bullish. You know, yeah. a lot of Wall Street analysts will say, look, we were bullish. We thought stocks would be higher. Then stocks went even higher than that. And so now we sort of have to, you know, accede to the fact that maybe the market is even more enthusiastic than we imagined. And it's, you know, the Wall Street analyst's job is to basically say, you know, is this going to get better or worse? Mm -hmm. Right now, the agreement is slightly better, but I don't think there are too many folks who are really pounding the table looking for another 15% rally in the next 12 months because. It'd be hard to do that after each of the last three rolling 12-month periods or, you know, looking at returns roughly in that range. Yeah, yeah it was interesting in um, Calvacina's note uh, where just the wording was so interesting to me about, like, we're okay-ish, we're kind of anxious yeah. about this bull rally. It was not an excited rah-rah, we're getting to record highs feeling. I'm curious, what does that tell you about the conviction under this rally and the degree to which maybe the folks whose notes we all soak up every day are maybe thinking, I don't love that this is all driven by one stock? Well, yeah, one stock, one theme. Yeah. And I think everyone has a similar outlook where earnings this year are going to be up a little bit, You know, not a huge move in earnings in, in 2024. The consensus view is about 10%, another 10% increase-ish, you know, give or take a couple percentage points in earnings next year. And so I think some of that ambivalence, if we want to call it that, is, our, you know, we're basically seeing stocks move higher on expected earnings growth, but it's happening now. So kind of the idea maybe is the best we can do next year is meet that, you know, call it, I think, you know, Lori's looking for 268 in earnings from the S&P in 2025. Consensus is right in that ballpark. So unless you see 15% earnings growth next year, and we know that most of the earnings growth has been from NVIDIA, Meta, uh, you know, Microsoft to an extent um, are the main drivers there of year over year earnings growth. So if we're already seeing that pulled forward into this year, the balance of the S&P is kind of flat. Uh, how excited are you going to be on a market that's gone up 30 some odd percent over 18 months, looking for 10% earnings growth next year, and you've kind of realized those gains. Now, it's not exactly the way that markets work, but I think that logic loop is essentially what you're going to be walking clients through as, as you, you talk through this process. I want to get your take on another note from earlier this week, Mike Wilson talking about the risks to inflationary pressures if Trump were to enter office again come November, talking about uh, inflation from tariffs and potential immigration policies. Uh, this brought me to a question that I came up with during your reading your morning brief mm -hmm. about whether AI or politics would drive markets more in the second half of the year. Yeah. What's your take on that? Well, you know, when you asked me, I said uh, politics, but then as we talked through it, I think the answer has to be AI, probably for all the things I just said, yeah. right? Like the markets rally this year, if we are to accept it's driven by earnings growth, and almost all the earnings growth is driven by the AI theme, then while it is going to be a, you know, a more interesting conversation around what would any presidential elects policies mean for you know, X, right? For tariffs, uh, inflation, I think tax policy. I mean, look at what happened in 17. I think tax policy is the most important part of this, whether it is a Trump or Biden win in November. But ultimately, if the market has very clearly declared itself, I mean, I kind of started the piece with this, right? The market's declared itself as an AI market. There's really nothing else to talk about when it comes to quote unquote, the market, because that is where a bunch of the action is coming from. We have a look at the index every day. 
then it follows that it has to be that over the second half of this year. And maybe that gets us all the way back to the ambivalence that a lot of strategists have around the outlook. People do think profit margins are going to be higher. People are fairly constructive on the economic growth path. You know, and GDP, of course, feeds into profits. But these are Wall Street strategists, not necessarily AI evangelists. And it becomes a very precarious position to be in when you're a strategist who thinks the market's going to go higher, but it all kind of depends on you know, what 2027 orders for NVIDIA's next chipper. Like that's a, that's a the yeah. scariest spot yeah. to be if you think yeah. S&P 6500, but it just matters what NVIDIA says on its call. Yeah, really absolutely. True. Miles, thanks for taking some time. Thanks. Joining us, Miles of newsroom fame, Miles Edlund. <laughs>